Hi there, welcome to this week's tech tip. Now I've been rather busy since the last tech tip, see if you can spot what I've done. Well this week I'm going to give you a roundup of what I have actually done so far and obviously what I've done in the meantime and hopefully we'll try and get the motor in eventually this week and get a gear mesh. So what have I been up to? Well, I've done a little bit more work around the front of the chassis here in order to have something to mount the front wheels onto. So this sort of strange framework here is a method of trying to get the front wheels where they need to be to fit the top chassis. You can see I've bent this sort of bar up around here and I've soldered it in and I've braced it again all over the top with some braid clip. You can see I've used braid clips and that kind of bracing everywhere so that hopefully the car will withstand all the rough and tumble. Well, then we take the top chassis and these loops that were on the top chassis before, if you look back at a previous video, I'll put a link on the screen there, you can see that I said I had to do some work with these because when it's sat on the chassis, it didn't set nice and square over the back axle. So I found some larger tube so this tube is much bigger than the 1 8 axle, so it wobbles around a bit. But I've then braced it around with these hoops that were there before. I had to just bend them a little bit and reshape them. But I've now mounted those in the right place so it sits nice and square on the chassis. I try to do it as neatly as I can without damaging any of the paintwork. But you can see the paintwork just with a little bit of heat from the soldering iron has just gone a little bit funny. So may need uh, touching up um, when it goes back to the customer. But when this mounts onto the chassis now, it sits nice and square. So here we are looking from above. The axle runs through those little loops. You can see these little loops here on the back. The axle runs through those and you can see there's a lot of movement there. There's quite a bit of, of, of wobble there allowing the chassis to take up any vibrations when it's going over the track. But the key thing is when I hold the chassis and I push on that back bumper, the chassis sits nice and straight. So the top chassis sits nice and straight in relation to the bottom chassis. But you can see the front wheels, this design of top chassis is a little bit short, I would say, but the front wheels have to come sort of all the way back to about here in order to match where the bumpers are. So without rebuilding a whole new top chassis that's a bit longer, I've had to build that sort of bracing that comes around like that, that C-shaped bracing, so I can solder the front axle onto it there. And it has to be fairly substantial piano wire because it's got to obviously, again, withstand lots of bashes and crashes uh, that might happen. And I'm going to strengthen it up in a slightly different way, which you'll see later in the video. So that's what I've been busy doing since the last time you saw me. Quite a bit of work bending that and getting that reinforced there but that's nearly ready to solder on now. So let's start with the gearing I'm going to use before I solder it onto the motor. Well, I had a bit of a choice here um, and really I've decided to go with gears that I can still get and are replaceable um, and possibly a little bit more robust, bearing in mind that there's very little lubrication um, on the tracks these days because people don't use goop like they used to use in the old days. So I've gone for a Red, Flo Red Fox, not Red Flox, Red Fox, 48 pitch gear that's got 28 teeth on it. And that goes with a Palmer, I think probably it is, a seven tooth, again, 48 pitch pinion. And they're pretty big teeth on these on 48 pitch. So there's quite a lot of mesh on these. I don't know whether you can see close up. But if I run that around the gear, you can see there's a lot of tooth engagement there. So hopefully that should be pretty robust gearing. Now I've chosen the seven tooth pinion because some of the tracks that these slot stocks race on are quite long. Um, well, I say long, not that long, probably about maybe 10, possibly up to 12 foot straights. Um, some are actually quite short and twisty. But bear in mind this is now going to be a fairly long chassis it might be more suited to the faster tracks also this is a super 16d motor that we're going to run that i've rebuilt 
for this purpose, um, which are quite quick motors. So I think 728 will be a reasonable ratio. I might have been tempted to try a 628, bearing in mind that these motors are going to rev quite a lot. Um, and potentially ultimate top speed is perhaps not what you want. But I also think the driver of this car is going to be racing on the outside lanes quite a lot of a track. So again, needs a higher average top speed. But again, it's fairly easy to change gearing if you're using an inline setup, which is what this car is. Where if the motor is actually in line with the gears, the motor is not at sort of 90 degrees or an angle winder or a side winder where the motor is at an angle to the gears. These are inline gears that we're using here. So that's my sort of thinking behind this gear ratio. But hopefully um, when I give this car back, he can do some testing on his track at home and let me know um, how the gearing works. And if I need to change it, then I can change it to make it more suitable. Note my filthy fingers. That's pretty much because I've been doing some motor building on another topic and the carbon brushes and stuff all get into your fingers and it's rather horrible. Uh, it takes a little while to scrub them off. So apologies for that, but there are actually clean. It's just sort of in ground into my fingers and it probably looks worse on the video. So we'll start by soldering the pinion on and the pinion does cover this horrible bit of the shaft that was a bit sort of manky before. So the pinion should sit nicely on that shaft. So I put a little bit of flux on there. I've got my hot soldering iron up to about 400 degrees, 410 degrees. And then I can just tin the shaft like this. Put a little bit of solder on the end of the soldering iron. Tend to do that just a couple of times just to make sure that the solder has flowed all the way around. Obviously being careful not to solder the shaft into the bushing. There we go. So solder's flowed all the way around. Then I can take the pinion and push the pinion on. Put some solder in the inside the pinion. Sorry, some flux inside the pinion like this. And a little bit of flux just on the shaft there. Then I can get my soldering iron and my knife. I put my knife between the bearing or bushing and the pinion. And then I can just heat it up and push the pinion on and I can rotate it a little bit, make sure solder's got inside, bring it off. And then I do the same again because I need to make sure that the inside of that pinion is tinned nicely and stays soldered to the shaft. So you can see actually it was a bit hot and it's moved along. So I'm going to heat that up again, slide it out. And make sure the inside of the pinion is coated nicely in solder. You can see inside actually, you can see that yes, the solder has coated the inside of that fairly well. So I think this is going to be it. So I can heat that up, push that on. There it goes up to the bushing, but maybe not quite. There we go. So there is a little gap between the bushing and the pinion. And then that's the pinion soldered on. Now, if you're not careful, you could get solder in the teeth of your pinion. If you put some too much flux on the end, solder can run into the teeth. Obviously, you can always clean that out with a knife afterwards. But a better way, if you're likely to do that, might be to use some of the armature dye that I've used on the armature. If you haven't seen that video, Look in the top right hand corner now, I put a link, but there's a link to some armature dye that you could use in here in the video description down below. So armature dye works, maybe even a permanent pen or something like that. If you colour in the uh, teeth of the pinion a little bit, it stops any sort of solder from flowing along the teeth of the pinion. So that's a handy little tip. So here's the pinion, all soldered on, cleaned up. Now, I wonder if you've noticed something else that I've done. Well, I rechecked the rules and it appears you can run ball races in the cans of motors. So I've put a ball race in there just to make sure it lasts a lot longer and doesn't need so much servicing. And um, ball races are pretty cheap anyway. Um, they are more expensive than a bushing, but they're not ridiculously expensive. Um, I think they're something around about nine pounds, something like that. So not too expensive. Um, but I've put a ball race in instead of the bushing. And that just makes sure 
as I say, it's going to wear better. Um, there's going to be minimal wear, minimal play in the gears, and it should last a lot longer between services as well. So that's all done on, and as I say, cleaned up. I used a little wire brush like this to brush any uh, deposits or any flux or any sort of remains of the flux away from the pinion um, when you do it and it cleans it up quite nicely leaves quite a nice finish on there um, and I say just make sure there aren't any rough edges um, or any dirt or muck left in the teeth of the pinion. I got my motor positioned correctly bear in mind I could move it slightly forward and back in the chassis but I positioned it correctly in regards to the spur gear that's going to go on, or sorry, the crown gear that's going to go on, not spur gear, the crown gear is going to go against that. So I know the position of my motor. I know I'm going to need to get it accurate. And I'm going to tack in the motor just towards the back on the two sides. So again, a little bit of flux in that joint. You probably can't see it so well from above, but I put a little bit of flux there. And my soldering iron is now quite hot. Got it up to around about 450 degrees because I don't want to stand there holding the soldering iron on the magnet for too long. So get that in place and just tack it on like that. And the heat that's in the soldering iron should make a nice instant solder joint straight away and you not have to worry. If you're wondering what this is, this is going to be a brace that I'm going to use later on. So I've tacked that in, make sure I'm happy with the position of the motor. I think I, it's just a little bit of play in it and I think I want to just angle that a fraction more. Let's just check that, that that's straight. Yes, I like the position of that. So I've just eyed up the sides of the motors with the main chassis rails just to make sure that does sit nice and square and straight in the chassis. And as I say, I'm happy with the position of that in the chassis. So once I've done that, I'm not going to tack the other side yet until I'm happy that everything is in place. Um, I might get this brace in place next. So you can see that brace is going to sit inside those pillar blocks and should sit down like that up against the motor and I'll solder the motor in at the top. So ultimately the motor is going to be solder at the top and the two back corners like that in three places. It's not going to go anywhere. So I've tinned this motor brace all round and just pushed it into position. So now I'm going to tack it in position. So I'm just going to tack it a little bit in this corner here. A little bit of flux. Again, nice and hot soldering iron, round about 450 degrees. A little bit of solder on there. And just tack that in position there. And I'm going to tack it in position the other side as well. Just tack it in position first because you might need to move it again later. So you don't want to put too much solder on it and jam it in position and not be able to move it in case I have to move the mode to get a better mesh later. Um, I shouldn't have to, but it's always worth just tacking it in until you're happy that everything's in the right place. And again there, I'm just going to tack the motor to the brace at the top here just to hold it in in two places and then I'm going to test the gear mesh. There we go. So I've tacked that in. I'm just going to give that a little bit of a scrub just so the flux is not sitting on it for a long time while I'm testing the gear mesh and I'll be back. So I'm back giving it a little scrub so you can see where I've just tacked it in there and I've tacked it in there and tacked it there and there under the motor. I'll clean that off uh, when I'm happy that that's the best joint. But you can see there is a small gap at the bottom. I don't think I really need to put any bracing on the bottom. If I'm soldering the motor on the two sides like this and the top, then that sort of triangulates the whole thing. The cans on these are pretty strong, so they're going to add some strength to the chassis anyway in the back end. These pillar blocks can't push in because of this bracing over the top here. So even if it gets a sideways knock, that bracing will protect it, especially when I solder it all the way along. So I think the back end's going to be pretty strong anyway and shouldn't need any more bracing. Okay, so I've put the gear onto the axle. You can see that the grub screw is cut down nicely so it doesn't stick out too much, so it keeps the balance. And I'm just going to run that round by hand and that feels quite nice. Even by hand you can feel that it's quite smooth and it rotates nicely in the direction it's going to be rotating on the track. So I do quite like that and I think that pinion mashes up 
nicely. You could also take a look along the back and make sure that the height of the motor is correct in the center line of the axle. And you can see that's pretty good if I look at it, get it dead straight like that. So I think the motor height's right or in the pillar block height I did in a previous video works quite nicely. There's clearance around the gear. You can see I've taken the gear down actually. I've taken it down in diameter a little bit because they are quite big these gears. It's now 27.2 millimeters in diameter. No! And it does just, you can see, come below the chassis there. But there's going to be plenty of ground clearance on the car anyway. It's a plastic gear. It won't damage the track, really. It's not like a metal gear that could chew up the track. It's a plastic gear, so it's quite soft anyway. So even if it does touch the track in places, if it, the tyres get really low, then it's never going to damage anything. So it does, say it does only stick through a fraction. But I don't want to go anymore because I don't want to reduce the size of the teeth anymore and reduce the reliability of it. So what I'm going to do now is... I'm going to finish soldering the brace in, uh, finish soldering the motor in, and then I'm going to get the spacing right of this gear to get an excellent mesh. So here we go, motor soldered in, bracing on. So it's soldered in all the way around the back there. You can see it also ties into these little brackets at the back for the back of the pans to make them stronger. It also goes right down into the corner there to make that joint stronger. All the way over here, and again the same that side all the way along and round and the motors tacked in both there and there or soldered in there and there so the back end is all sort of triangulated and it isn't going to go anywhere so that should be nice and strong now so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be cutting a bit of tube to space it behind the gear and a bit of tube to space it here so that no matter what you do your gear still can't move from side to side and it keeps the the mesh into the right position so a bit of tube there a bit of tube there and then it will space the gear appropriately in between the two bushes. So I've cut two bits of tube. One bit of tube sits that side of the gear, one bit of tube sits the other side of the gear. You can see there's hardly any movement in that gear at all now. And yet there is just a small amount of backlash in the teeth to leave quite a nice gear mesh. So I'm going to start that up and you can hear the gear mesh. Okay, so I'm running that about three volts. I'll just give it some revs and you can listen to how sweet it is. So that runs up very nicely. I'm very happy with that. So if you've got a little bit of tube like this, which is what I've just cut, and you want to get the end nice and uh, perpendicular to the axle so you haven't got a wobbly end, when you cut the tube sometimes you get a wobbly end to the tube well the tech tip is put it on an axle like that just hold your fingers near the end of the axle just so it comes slide slightly off the axle and then you should be able to run your disc up against that bit of tube let's see if we can do it with this in the midair it's a bit hard to hold it in place here And you can see how the tube spins like that and by spinning the tube you get a nice smooth finish. Now I'm holding this in mid-air so it's kicking my arm back a little bit. But if I was holding that all nice and tightly then I should be able to just spin that up nicely and then that spins that edge of that tube nice and parallel with the longitudinal part of the axle. You can do that both sides, just to skim off both sides. And if you need to make the tube a little bit shorter, just hang it over the axle again and skim a little bit more off. So with that beautiful gear mesh, we're going to leave it there today. Join me next time when we come back and we get the top chassis mounted on with the front mounts over here. We get the axle back on, possibly even get the guide in next time. So if you haven't done so already, please subscribe up here. Have a look at some of my other videos. If you haven't seen my Slot Stocks videos from the start, there's a Slot Stocks playlist on my channel. And I will see you again next week for some more chassis building action.